Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the last couple of steps needed to prepare your model for texturing. Now, between this video and the last one, I did add a couple of more seams here. I wasn't really satisfied with the UV layout because of how badly stretched some of the pieces were. So the first step in making sure your model is prepared for texturing is just checking to make sure that the UV map makes sense. Now you can uh, do a couple of things to help it make a little bit more sense. Um, I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to actually rotate each of the individual islands here. Select everything and then grab the island select and I'm just going to rotate this so that if I were to paint on it I would know exactly what I was painting on uh, and then I'm going to take these objects and I'm just going to move them around so that they actually do make sense to me. Uh, I know that these are ears and these are head pieces. So I'm actually going to move these off to the side for just real quick. I'm going to put the ears above the, or maybe place them us, uh, beside here and rotate them around. Now your hotkeys for rotation, scale, and translation R, G, and S will still work in the UV editing workspace. It's just a matter of applying and moving and doing what you need to do. And this to me is a much better UV map because I can more easily read the individual pieces. I know that these are eyes, these are ears, this is a face, and you know what? This is the head, but let's be honest, this is the other side of the head. So let's actually swap these around with their positions. And so now we've got the two pieces of the head, the two ears, the two eyes, the face, and the mouth are all their own pieces. And you know what? I could pull off the nose there, but I'm not going to. We're going to call this a day. So this is a good readable UV map, and now this part is done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S and save the file so that the UV map stays in place. Now I'm going to go over to the Texture Paint workspace, and what's this? I have a purple monkey head. Now the reason I have a purple monkey head is because I do not have any material or texture slot attached to a material that we can paint directly on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the material tab on our properties panel and just add in a new material. Now it's important that you name this material so I'm going to call this monkey head Suzanne and then I'm going to go back up to the tool option here and we're going to grab the correct brush. Now this brush doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't actually have to grab the brush, but you do need to have a brush selected in order to have this texture slot option. And then all we have to do is add in a texture slot. So we'll just hit plus and then base color and we're good to go. Now when the texture paint slot opens up, we do have some options here. First, the texture slot needs a name, and this name that you give it will be the name of the actual texture in the image editor that if you were to save it, it would be the name of the file on your computer. So if you name your material first, you'll have the material's name, and then space base color will be that. You'll get the material name and then specular or roughness, metallic, normal bump, or displacement, depending on which texture slot you choose. But since we're choosing the uh, base color, in fact, you know what? I'm going to change this. I don't like this name. We'll just call this MHS, uh, which is probably a bad naming scheme, but... For the purpose of the lesson, now you can see a little bit better. This is MHS base color. Then we have width and height options. These are just the pixel densities. What we can actually do is say, you know what? I don't want a 1K texture. I want a 2K texture. So we can just, well, that's actually subtract by two. So let me add two to that. But we can actually do mathematical equations in this field. So if I just multiply that by two, that'll be 2048. And then I should be able to control C and control V uh, down in there. So I can set one and then just hover over it, hit control C and hit control V to place it in the height. Or I can do the mathematical equation again as we saw the first time, either way. All right, then we have some color options. If you know that most of the map is going to have a particular color, you could set that color there and then make the generated type blank. That would work, but that is not what I want to do. I actually want to use that UV grid that we had before, so the color does not matter. And then I'll hit 
OK. So now we can see that the UV grid that we created is applied. We can see a little bit of the stretching and how it plays out because some of these uh, squares are bigger or smaller than others. But for the most part, we're ready. And if yours looks like this, and we grab the right texture from the dropdown in the image editor, now we are ready to start texturing.